Hey, Chris here. Welcome back. In this video, I am going to be taking a look at a new product that I am really excited about. It's the Unify G4 doorbell camera. It's Ubiquiti's latest offering in their Unify Protect line of security cameras. And I know what you're thinking, another video doorbell. But this one does have some unique features. So spec-wise, it competes against other popular video doorbells like the Ring Pro or the Nest Hello. And it's got a 2 megapixel sensor recording at 1600 by 1200, supports 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and it's hardwired for power instead of being battery operated. So at the time of filming, it retails for $199. So it actually costs less than those competing models. But the biggest difference is that it does not have a subscription fee because the Unify Protect system stores your data locally rather than off in the cloud. So this eliminates some of the privacy concerns about potential third-party access to your video because everything stays on your premises. Now that does mean you will also need to purchase a Unify network video recorder to store the data, but Ubiquiti offers several models at a variety of price points, such as their CloudKey Plus, the UDM Pro, or the UNVR. And even with that extra hardware cost, the cheaper camera plus lack of subscription fee means you're probably going to make up for the larger upfront cost pretty quickly. Now, like its competitors, this doorbell is powered by a standard 16-volt doorbell transformer rather than PoE. So this means that connectivity comes from Wi-Fi rather than Ethernet. So you need to make sure you have good Wi-Fi coverage at your door in order to use it. The installation is straightforward. Just attach the mounting plate to your wall, then connect the power wires to the back of the camera, snap the camera to the plate, the kit also includes a 20 degree wedge in case you need to angle your camera away from the wall. And if you have a doorbell chime, there is also a small chime connector that needs to be wired in. Okay, I'm taking a look at how the app sends notifications when you get a doorbell ring. And you'll see I press the button and immediately I get a notification. Pops open in the app. And then we get a live view. And from here, we can either do talk back. Hello. A little bit of feedback, given that I'm right next to it. Uh, but you also see a live picture. And you can also send a text to say something like, leave the package at the door, do not disturb, or you can enter a custom message. We'll put one on there. And that displays on the screen, on the doorbell. Pretty cool. I'm now going to do a test of the microphone talkback, and you'll get to hear what it sounds like as it comes out of the doorbell. Now I'm outside, so there's a lot of background noise, kids playing, cars driving by, but that just kind of makes it more of a real world test. So I'm going to walk away so I don't get feedback on my camera, and uh, we'll talk to it and show you what it sounds like. The doorbell has a nice nighttime feature, which is an entry light that activates when it detects motion. This not only adds a layer of physical deterrence, but it also makes it easier to see the door lock to insert your key when it's dark outside. Now speaking of the dark, the camera has a pretty good nighttime recording capability. I found that the built-in IR lights do a good job of illuminating nearby subjects, and on the first night I had it installed, it caught a minor emergency in my neighborhood. A fire truck and an ambulance went by with strobes flashing, but I was impressed that the camera was not blinded by those bright lights. This tells me that you shouldn't have any problems if there's a light source, such as a street light or porch light, that's in the camera's view. Even direct sunlight doesn't seem to cause any problems. My doorbell faces east, so this is the view that my camera sees every morning. It's pointed directly at the sun. But the HDR processing is still able to capture plenty of details in the shadows, the lens flares are minimal, and I have no problem seeing who is at the door. Now I'm going to take a look at the mobile app, since that's probably the interface that most people will be using to manage this camera. The start screen shows you a list of all of your cameras. Now right now I only have the doorbell installed, but any of the Unify Protect NVRs can handle recording from multiple cameras simultaneously. 
So tapping on the camera will bring you to the timeline view where you can quickly scroll through your past footage. Unlike some of the competitors, the Protect system records continuously, so you can go back and review footage even if there wasn't an associated motion event. The system is very responsive, and you can easily scrub through days worth of footage with the flick of a finger. And any motion or ring events are marked on the timeline with a thumbnail. Now once you've found some footage of interest, you can use pinch gestures to zoom in on the scene, and then you can pan around with your finger. Or even use the phone's accelerometer to move around. And we're going to go back to the main screen, and in the Events tab, you're going to find a history of all of the doorbell ring or motion detection events. Tapping on any one will jump into the timeline and replay the video. I find the motion detection events useful if you have a delivery driver like mine that just never rings the doorbell. So here you see him dropping off a package. Now inside, I got a notification on my phone and saw there was a delivery. So a few minutes later, here is the event where the camera saw me opening the door to retrieve that package. Now we'll go back to the main screen and to the App Settings tab. And here, you can adjust what types of events you want to get notifications for and when to receive them. You can enable push notifications or emails for motion and ring events independently. You can even set up notifications for when a user arrives or leaves the house based on app geofencing. And if we go back to the camera view, and then we click on the gear icon that's in the top right of the screen, you can adjust some of the camera-specific settings. Here, you can set the stream resolution, turn on and off the infrared lights, adjust picture settings, or set up motion detection zones. These zones allow you to set up regions of the screen that will trigger recording. Here you can see I have a region around my sidewalk, so the camera will ignore motion in the tree, which reduces false positives on windy days. So after spending a few weeks with the G4 doorbell, I gotta say, I really like it. It's a solid device and it works well. The image quality is good both day and night, and I've had no problems with the app or notifications. Now, it's not a perfect device. I'd love to see a future doorbell with an option to connect the camera using power over ethernet. This would give it a bulletproof connection since Wi-Fi can be flaky in certain environments. And it would also provide a centralized way to add a battery backup, since power would be handled through a PoE switch. I'd also like to see AI image processing to perform person and package detection, as well as maybe facial recognition. These are features that are available in some of the competitors' cameras, and it would be awesome to get a notification stating there's a package at your door, or your neighbor John is at your door. There's also a few other smaller features I'd like to see too, such as maybe a thumbnail in the notification. It's included in the email, so it doesn't seem like it would be too hard to add. There's also currently no way to use the microphone talkback feature in the web interface, only through the mobile app. But overall, I gotta say, if you're looking for a video doorbell for your home or business, the Ubiquiti G4 doorbell should definitely be on your list to consider. So if you've got some thoughts on it, leave them in the comments. I'm Chris, and I'll see you next time.